you guys stand here. Yeah. Like you don't understand it the whole time. Yeah, go ahead okay. and introduce yourself. Are we live streaming it? Uh, I think we're going to live stream it. Yeah. Okay. So, all right. Well, hi, everyone. Welcome. Uh, I'm Information Jason. I'm a faculty librarian here at Seminole State College of Florida. And today we're talking about veganism. I'm going to keep my, my mask over here. Um, just by kind of a, a show of hands, how many folks are, are vegan or interested in veganism or vegetarianism? In the back, I see a cowering head. There, there's no shame here. That's totally. Hey, biscuit this morning, so I think I'm in the wrong room. It's totally <laughs> fine. Hey, you you don't learn later. It's totally fine. This is an information workshop, right? We're here to learn. So we're just going to go over a couple things. There's a few folks here, and we'll try to have a discussion and try to leave here with some, some information that can help us uh, make our own decisions. Either way, right? Um, so, following this plant-based resource event, you should be able to um, define the vegan lifestyle, and we'll talk about that and how that's different than just the word diet, okay, and what that means. Um, identify animal-friendly products. I have a, a few uh, different things that I brought in, but looking at the labels, right, the labels definitely matter. What's on the label and what's, what's the messaging from the company that you're contributing to as part of your lifestyle, right? Who's supporting you that you're supporting with your money? Uh, we'll examine the sources for credibility and we'll talk about uh, how to search the library databases in just a little bit. And then we're trying to start a, a student life veg club. So that is the ultimate goal that we would like to do uh, on the student side. So take a look on the screen here. This is a definition that I uh, made up. Um, so veganism is a compassionate lifestyle choice that intentionally avoids consuming products that include or cause harm to animals. And so when you really strip this down, there's a lot of components to it, right? So the compassionate part really comes, uh, from my point of view, from uh, a moral and ethical standpoint, right? So I've been vegan uh, since 1995. So it's been a long time, it's been a long commitment, and that choice wasn't really a choice. It just became, oh, here's the information, here, this is possible, and it was always part of compassion for animals. Um, and so the compassionate part is there, even if it's not intentional, even if one says, I just want to do it for health reasons, um, you're still avoiding any consumption of animals. And I say that deliberately because it, it isn't just about eating, um, it is an intentional choice, and when you're talking about consuming, and we'll look in just a couple minutes, it goes beyond just, say, meat or eggs. It also gets into what you're wearing, and it also gets into the companies that you're supporting, and also how those companies may or may not be violating the planet. And so it is kind of a, a, a big sort of uh, octopus tentacles kind of going everywhere. And of course, include or cause harm to animals, a lot of things, um, on different products that you'll notice, and I just kind of brought this in a little bit too, is you also want to avoid products that are tested on animals. And so some products could be tested on animals, or some products could be not tested on animals, yet still have animal products. So it really does start to get a real um, plant-based sort of information research that you really have to do. You can't just wake up and say, I'm vegan and that's it, because there's a lot of things that you have to search for. So putting it in picture form for my visual learners, uh, taking a look here. So again, the lifestyle uh, will encompass more than just what you eat. So if we take a look here, we can see our friends, uh, the pigs and the, the bunnies were tested on animals and the cows. So essentially, there's no consumption of any animal products. There's also uh, an avoidance uh, to eat an animal or to wear an animal or to purchase a product that was tested on an animal. And of course, that's going to be our, our baseline. And that consists of meat, dairy, any fur or products tested on animals. There's also eggs. There's a lot of different things, right? And we have someone coming. Hey there, welcome. Hi. Welcome. We're just going over veganism, plant-based lifestyle. If you have any questions, let us know. And so there's a couple different reasons to go vegan, and so just to go back to everyone in the room here, kind of what brought everyone here today? What are some sort of interests that you may have? What would you like to learn, you know, as you, as you leave? And so some of, the, some of the reasons that folks might go is health and well-being. I want to I think 
clearer, I'd like to be healthier, maybe I want to drop a couple pounds, what have you. Um, personal wellness, again, maybe uh, I just don't I wake up and I feel sluggish. Maybe every time before I go to take a test, I eat a giant pizza from Papa John's and I, for some reason, feel awful <laughs> after that. Um, lifelong learning. As I mentioned, this is a conscious decision. So you can't just say, I'm vegan vegetarian, that's it, and you know, a genie in a bottle, and poof, you're a vegan. You really have to learn and to read what's going on because your body can't sustain an immediate transformation. You're, there's nutrients, there's things that your body's getting, and if you just shut that down to switch to something else, your body's gonna say, hey, what's, what's going on? What are you doing? I'm not feeling well, and you go, probably faint or some bad things can happen. Uh, the local community, where are you, again, who, where are you financially supporting, right? Who around you is making your community better in terms of the, the, the resources that you're getting, the local markets, farmers markets, and so on. And this is a money economy, so these are economic choices, and this is the proverbial money, okay? <laughs> and then, of course, the planet. This has ripple effects through the planet. So, for instance, it takes a lot, a lot, a lot of water for one cow to drink, and then that cow is just chopped up in all these different pieces and used for all these other things, but all of that water could be used for folks around the world who don't have any water. So you start to see like, well, why are we using so much water here? And then why is that cow uh, emitting methane, right? A lot, a lot, a lot of methane, gas. And then that's contaminating the planet and making it worse. So why are we doing anything with this poor cow? Why can't we just let the cow be? And that's helping folks who might need the water. And then that's also helping us and we can breathe better. Um, there may be religious beliefs. Right? There may just be, hey, you know, one day I was traveling on the side of the road and I saw this, maybe a, a truckload of animals and they all, you know, it was a horrible crash and maybe that was a life-changing event. You know, anything can be on this. These are just a couple of different uh, examples. Um, and so when you're evaluating the information, uh, this is where I'll kind of go over here a little bit. Um, so I do, again, I have a couple products here, and I'm just going to pass these around. One is uh, toothpaste, and one is a bar of soap. So why don't I just kind of pass these around, and just kind of take a look at the different, again, the products. We live in a consumer economy. We live in an economy where everything is instantaneous now, drive-through mentality, right? Where, where is it? I want it right now. I want it right now. But determine the who. Where is this information coming from? Who are these companies? What are the words? on these products. And when you drill down into the minutia here, you're gonna to start to see some really cool and clever things. One says something like, I see Rock On is on there, and like uh, the Dr. Bronner soap is amazing because I feel like their labels never end. You're familiar with Bronner soap? Yeah, they're the best. I love reading their labels. For sure, and that really says, oh, well I, I kind of love this company because that builds trust and rapport. And so that really helps because when you think about it, you can go to a restaurant, say you go to a, a McDonald's these days or a Burger King, and a Burger King offers a, a what, impossible burger, but they also sell what? All of the other burgers. So they're telling you implicitly, trust us that no other contaminants or anything's gonna get on here, or trust us that in the drive-through, that 30 second transaction, that you're actually gonna get the right burger that you're looking for, because you've ordered it without cheese and without mayonnaise. Trust us, because I'm you know, 14 year old employee or whatever. All of this stuff makes me go, wait a minute, I don't know if I trust this company. And so consider the when, right? When was all this information published? How current is it? Look at the marketing, it's all very important. So that brings us here. Now again, I've mentioned before that I've been vegan for over 200 years. It's been a really long time. But back in the day, this didn't exist. And now all you have to do is look for this. So it should be available on, definitely on this one, if not that one as well. And so that kind of stands out. Again, we're looking for that trust information. But you really should be, if you're traveling on a vegan journey or you're going at least to plant-based, you really should be looking at the labels. How many of you folks actually look at the labels when you 
do the stuff. In the back, once again, I don't, I don't, I don't see a hand in the back, which is fine. Hopefully today, maybe things will change. Um, but you also, on the top there, you do want to start reading about uh, animal ingredients and kind of learning. We were talking a little bit before we started this presentation about different folks and different diets and different patterns and stuff, and you kind of do want to start understanding like what some of these ingredients are, and that contributes to your lifelong learning. Because A, those ingredients aren't going anywhere, and B, as your life changes and you start to progress and get older, your body is going to start needing different things, okay? So yeah, this is a great example of these uh, family soap makers. And again, as I mentioned on the previous slide, consider the when, okay? So this says, family soap makers since 1858. Okay, just about the time I turned vegan. So you can tell <laughs> that these folks are trustworthy, right? And they've been doing this. They've been doing this for a really, really long time. Here's our certified vegan. I also want to point out that some of the other labels on here too, which you, you can't see, it's too small. Fair trade. Does anyone know what fair trade is? Joe, would you like to explain to us what fair trade is? Because yes. I didn't see a lot of hands. So fair trade means that throughout the production of the product, that there's an ethical consideration for all hands involved and for everybody involved. It means that whoever made that soap, if it's fair trade, whoever was the one working on it was paid a living wage, and they did not work in a sweatshop. And there's other elements to this too, and we can jump in here, um, but there's environmental concerns as well of how much you're polluting the environment in the production of the product, and so there's a certain environmental threshold that you have to meet to be able to consider fair trade. So fair trade products are typically a little bit more expensive than other products are. So if you go to you know, like Walmart or something and you buy a pack of three t-shirts for $8, you know that they were made in a sweatshop. They're not fair trade whatsoever. Somebody was paid a dollar an hour to make those t-shirts. If you buy one fair trade t-shirt, you're probably going to pay $20 for it. But you will know that the person who produced that was not paid a slave. Thank you, Joe. Yeah, correct. And the other thing, too, a lot of times you see it on coffee as a good example. If it's picked from someone who lived way up in the mountains of wherever, if it's fair trade certified, that person is getting the fair representation in that wage. And even if we're not really fully fathoming all of these like explicit definitions, what you know is that that label is on here, so you're good. You know what I mean? That's helping you. It's the same way in here with non-GMO certified. Anyone know what non-GMO certified is? Versus a GMO? Genetically modified organism. So it's basically made. And a lot of times that you want to kind of avoid this is in things like corn and corn syrup. It's just, it's like, it's, it's not coming from the earth. It's just somebody in a factory making this kind of stuff and it's just garbage. So none of that is included here. But look at the labels, you, you know, you can see all these little things in here, and so that's going into this. Now this bar of soap too um, is great. It's probably expensive, depending on how you look at it, but it's your body, so where's the justification of that not being worth it? Remember who you're making the choice for, and remember you're going to, you know my international symbol for money, you're making this decision anyway, so why not start like making a good decision to go back to health and well-being, personal wellness. Why don't you invest, I'm not selling this soap by the way, but <laughs> invest in products that are going to help you. Here's another example, just looking on the product. This is farm-grown mint, okay? Mind-blowing freshness. Doesn't that sound awesome? Blah, 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 no peroxide, no artificial sweeteners, no artificial flavors, no, 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 no. Think about it in these terms. You're writing a research assignment on diabetes, okay? You end up going to a sugar, Coca-Cola, Sprite, Mountain Dew. Is there anything, just think, is there anything on any of those websites that they're gonna say our product could lead to diabetes? Anything at all? But haven't we seen studies about too much sugar immediately leads to diabetes? And isn't high fructose corn syrup a sugar byproduct? Isn't that in sodas? Therefore, why wouldn't they put it on? But these folks are. They're saying, no, we don't, no, we don't want any of this stuff. And then up on the bottom, no dyes, no preservatives, no parabens, no brainer. So they're getting creative and they're trusting. Yes? So if 
if that label says not tested on animals, and you mentioned a little earlier that um, some products are not tested on animals but could have ingredients that have been tested on animals, how would I know or like what's the best path to, for researching that? Good question. So again, we're looking at a discrepancy. And does everyone know the little bunny rabbit at this point? So if you see a little bunny rabbit or there's a line through the, the bunny rabbit saying not tested. This one, this one is a different answer because this one explicitly says Leaping Bunny certified, never tested on animals plus vegan. So this one you know. And to go back to the most elementary answer, by reading the label, which some people don't do, uh, by reading the label, you get that. But that goes back to learning about the animal ingredients. So which A, should say it's vegan, B, it should say it doesn't have any animal products, or C, you should know that something like lanolin, for example, is an animal product, right? You just start reading and researching and retaining that information because why? It's your investment, and so you really have to learn. Just remember, everything that you know today, you've learned along the way. So this is no different. Yes, in the back, we have a question. So, so are these certifications third party managed in the sense, or are these, are these manufacturers just simply making that assertion and putting it on? And like we would assume, you know, with, a, with other produce, well, this is USDA inspected, meaning there's a producer and then there's a third party that investigates it and looks over. Is there, is, are these certifications similar to that or are they all just kind of self-disclosed? Great question. The question is, is, essentially, how do you get this on the product? The answer is you pay for it, okay? So it is, uh, this group exists, you can go to vegan.org and you would pay them a fee and then they put that on each one. On this one, it says vegan. Again, this is a toothpaste and this is a uh, soap, different companies just using as examples. This one doesn't have it, but it is vegan and it states that it's vegan. Now, the label, once again, we're just kind of Alice in Wonderland here, folks, right? There's only so much trust you can put. Was I in the factory? Did I see where the soap was made? Do you ever look behind the curtain and see all this stuff? The answer is no, you, you have to you know, trust them. But how many of you have seen a Netflix documentary on the fishing industry recently? Yes, raise your hands. What is that called, do you remember? Because I'm blanking on it, so I can use some assistance. Oh, no. Seaspiracy. Seaspiracy. Yeah. Now, write that down, take a picture, try to, try to watch it if you can. Seaspiracy is amazing, and without giving too much away, you watch it, they really start uncovering that these dolphin safe tunas, right? Have you heard of that? And that's going to be very similar to what you talked about. Aren't dolphin safe at all? <laughs> all it is, is a pay to play. We're paying you to put that on the label, and folks, let's just say, just like you and I, go, okay, all right, here's my money. I protect dolphins every day, what do you do? Well, I protect dolphins, I keep buying this product, and then one day, as I mentioned earlier, a cataclysmic event happens, such as you watch this video and realize, oh, that whole thing was a farce. I am a fool. I am never going to make that decision again. And therefore, you become a protester. You protest by boycotting. And that's where the activism comes in. So there is a lot of activism that is implicit here, meaning you're not necessarily standing on a street corner with a sign, but you could. But the best way to do any activism is to not support financially with any of these companies. Seaspiracy, thank you. I encourage, did you like it? Yeah. Did it, it was, make you think about a lot of new things and you're like, wait a minute, this is kind of, this is really yeah, weird. Yeah, it was like super shocking. Um, and then I'm very sensitive when I come to animals, so it was just like so sad for me. I deposit so many times, so I was like, I can't believe this is happening. Good. And so in a way, that's the learning, because sometimes you do need to see that. Just like we're riding our bike, we kind of need to fall a little bit to go, oh, I don't want to do that again. Um, but I thought the same thing. There was too much of the, you know, some animals are harmed and there's a lot of red everywhere and you're like, oh, that's too much red for me, I can't do it. Uh, but it's a, it's a very noble quest and then you could start to see as this, this documentary continues, 
uh, folks didn't like what he was doing, and they became very upset, and the tensions were raised, and his, you know, the threat level started to go up on his personal safety. Plus, he's outside of uh, you know, the United States and some international territory, and we're getting into sharking and whaling and you know, big red tuna, you know, tuna and it's, it's intense. Yes? Yeah, I was gonna say, um, warning, don't watch it with children. It's upsetting, and you may not want to watch it at night because then you're going to go to bed with those images, and there are some really correct. However, to challenge that, those are the perfect opportunities to look because, again, we're talking about how far do you want to go. Mm -hmm. Now, you bring up children too. So, now you're, say, for instance, you live this lifestyle, but now what do you do with new folks? Mm -hmm. How do you, you know, introduce them? We're still allowing them to make their own decisions with still having your own, you know, again, we're, we're Alice in Wonderland here. Any new scenario that comes up, it just keeps going and going. But the more information you get, just like in that video, you look at it and you go, okay, now what am I doing? Because I know folks who have signed a pledge, and there's an online pledge immediately, say, I'll never eat fish again. What are they doing? They're boycotting the fishing industry. And there's no more industry if folks aren't paying. So just think about it in those terms. What about farm-raised fish? Farm-raised fish. There's been no, there's no bigger farce that I've ever heard in my life than something like farm-raised or sustainable. This is a sustainable cow or these uh, farm-grown whatever. That's marketing terms. Mm -hmm. So it's a fishery. They're making fish. It's a fish. They just keep. It's more fish and fish and fish and fish. But they put a little hook, a net. I guess a pun intended. And they're saying, oh, this is a sustainable or whatever. And you go, oh, let's go over there. It's sustainable. Like, okay. <laughs> Again, these are money decisions that you're making. That's why I pointed out the explicit verbiage on those uh, labels, right? Because you do want to know where your money's gone. Those farm-raised fisheries, too, they're, um, they're loaded with so many antibiotics. You're just <laughs> pumping them the into fish, the fish. The fish are kept in such tight quarters oh, yeah. that disease is rampant. Um, similar to other animal agriculture, which maybe Jason will touch on later, but there's so much, like they're crammed into such tiny spaces that they just dump antibiotics into the water. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, our antibiotic resistance is going down a lot of times because like, you know, there's a threat, this idea that we, antibiotics would be no, no longer useful within, you know, a decade or so because, you know, it's not just that we're giving too many to humans, it's the amount that goes to animals. Like that's the like, number one consumer of antibiotics of the animals. Yeah, and, and I mean, when you think about it, and we'll come back. When you think of it, so you have a cow. What's the name of our cow? Let's name our cow. Betsy. Betsy. So we have Betsy the cow, right? Betsy's just chilling. Betsy's having a great day on a farm. But the farmer needs to make this money, okay? So what do we do with Betsy? Well, Betsy isn't producing. Betsy isn't giving enough milk or anything like that. So we're going to have to pump Betsy with XYZ, some sort of antibiotic, some sort of foreign substance to make Betsy get more milk and more milk and more milk. And now all of a sudden Betsy's freaking out and scared every time she sees the farmer come and then it's just like nonstop and Betsy's body isn't used to doing all this. And then all of a sudden one day Betsy has a heart attack and dies. That's probably the kindest way for Betsy to die in that scenario. But can't you imagine that's the way it is? with chickens and pigs and fish, where it's just like money, 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 because if those products aren't there, then they're not really a farmer or a salesman. They're just a person looking for money, right? So they have to make more and more. There's more people in the world and more demand and more demand and like more and more and more. But if you stop giving them your money, they go out of business. Yes? I think uh, C. Spiracy has a clip on the um, farming. Correct. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I have the image. Um, yeah, yeah, the images are going to leave your head. So. Try to watch it. Sea yeah. spiracy. And, and again, I don't work for Netflix or no. anything like that, but it's very, it's worth it. Yeah, and then a, a lot of the documentaries about food, the beef shock. I mean, I love watching documentaries. Right, and that shock, and you said shock, and that could be our mm -hmm. word of the day. But isn't isn't there? Um, a gratifying satisfaction of that shock when you walk away and go, oh, that new information just came in and I learned that and I can retain that to build my future, you know, frame of reference. Now I have that, now I understand, if you know. Shock 
coupled with truth. Correct. Mm -hmm. And that's the lifelong learning that we're talking about here. So this can contribute to that just by your diet or your economic decisions. Okay, so some of the things here, I'll kind of stand back and you know, let you look at it. So, questions that a vegan gets. What do you eat? Where does your protein come from? What do you eat? Where does your protein come from? Or my favorite, where does your protein come from? What do you eat? <laughs> it's the same questions all the time. Um, we were talking about it before we started this presentation. A lot of this information here is pretty self-explanatory, but you can see it really gets into the minutia of different kinds of seeds, different kinds of nuts, all of which very protein-based, right? Everything is, is going to be good for you. There's no animals harmed in the making of this slide, okay? <laughs> um, but sometimes people, you know, I don't want kale. I don't want spinach. Okay, that's fine. It's still there. It's available, right? The same thing with nuts, you know, or any of the fruits. I have a hard time eating fruits, to be honest. Sometimes you don't go out and just get a date. You know, you can, well, you can't eat too many dates. That might be a problem. Melons, bananas, again, this is a pretty loose list. There's a lot of different things that you can eat. I just wanted to put this slide up there to reinforce that vegans do eat and we do like food and it's not just oxygen and uh, grass that we eat, okay? Um, so, I wanted to talk about the library databases. This is a, a great opportunity for you to um, do your own research and to see what we have available, right? Faculty, students, staff, everyone. So you could start at seminalstate.edu slash library. And so what I've done is, um, essentially, all you really need to do is just put in the one keyword, vegan or vegetarian. And so I've just taken a look here at the two different ones. So this is going to be the vegan resources and then this is gonna be the vegetarian resources. Just to give you a snapshot of how many different articles and, and reviews and uh, databases that we have. So when you're looking for stuff, make sure to use the library resources because this is an ongoing conversation and it is something that you will need to have, um, not just me, right, uh, as, as, a, as a faculty librarian with master's degrees and as a vegan for however many years, but you do wanna make sure that information is coming from a reliable source, right? Just like we had seen if we were referencing uh, Seaspiracy, can any of us remember uh, the gentleman who's in the movie? Anyone remember his name? No, we're just saying Seaspiracy, and that's not the name of a person, that's just the name of the movie. So we would want to find out his name, and of course, unfortunately, all of us forget it because he's a pretty, pretty Kip, awesome dude. Kip Anderson. Kip Anderson? Does that sound familiar? I we'll have to look. <laughs> I'll have to look. I, all I remember is Seaspiracy the whole time. Um, so, for the students here, we are trying to um, start a student club. So we want to start a vegan club that's kind of based on this, like talking about different restaurants or talking about different products, talking about sort of, again, exchanging information and learning from each other. And so what we're trying to do is we need um, 10 students minimum uh, and all of the information for how to do the um, student life clubs is available here. Um, but I'm interested in it. I know you're interested. I know you're interested. Um, so the faculty's interested. We just need some students interested. So you have to go out and get eight more people and then we're good to go. Um, and then this is me and then this is Joe. And so we're kind of trying to do um, the veg club thing uh, here at Seminole State on this campus, on the SLM campus. And I guess I will open it up maybe to any questions or thoughts or concerns. I have one quick question about the slide. When you were talking about a fair trade and then the official, like the vegan stamp, like the vegan yes, seal, the seal. Uh -huh. like would you say, and I know I understand you're saying you have to do research and be vigilant and read labels, of course, but would you say that like stuff that's fair trade or stuff that's vegan and fair trade, like do they intersect more often than not? They could, but there's not a lot of different things like um, for instance, one could be uh, a daughter, one could be a daughter and a mother, one could be a daughter, a mother, and a sheriff. Like, it, you have a lot okay. of different things that you have. So it's, for instance, if just because it's vegan doesn't mean it's fair trade and vice versa. Okay, so like but coffee is a good example. In your estimation, I guess I'm asking you about, in your estimation, do you think mo they kind of end up, if something they kind of end up intersecting could. more often than not or not necessarily. They could. And then that means certified vegan means that no, at any point in the creation of that product, that no animals were used at all in any way, whether it's an ingredient in the product or 
Correct. So let's, like let's in the process. A, okay, I just want to make sure. Let's take a field trip. Everyone want to go on a field trip? Yeah. So we are going to vegan.org. So this is vegan action. I highly encourage you to, to get in touch with these folks for the animals, for the environment, and for your health. Uh, none of that should sound um, different from what we've been talking about in this presentation. Um, so let me zoom in just a little bit. Let me know in the back, back, back. Can you read it? Yeah. Okay. This answers your question. Our logo is a registered trademark for products that do not contain animal products or, more importantly, byproducts. Those are the little ones that slip through the cracks that nobody really knows about. Okay. And that have not been tested on animals. So again, when you think about it, just pause really quickly here. I'm vegan. I don't eat animals. But I'm going to buy like that soap that just takes a bunny rabbit and just like destroys it with a product or something just so I can like have better shampoo. All right, bad example. I don't wear shampoo. But like <laughs> anything at all like that, right? Why would you, why, uh, to go back to what you were saying before, you almost have to do it completely in a vegan lifestyle to really kind of justify your compassionate choices. So for instance, it's, it wouldn't be enough to say I'm vegan, but on some days of the week I eat a little bit of cheese. Well, that, that's great because you're not eating animals for all those other things, but in terms of the definition, if, if you're you know, adhering to the lifestyle, then that would be incorrect. It would be the same thing with, you know, hey everyone, I'm vegan, I don't eat meat, I don't eat dairy, but this is a full head-to-toe fur coat, right? That at least 55 chinchillas were just ripped of their skin just so I can wear it. Can't you see that doesn't really jive? That's not... Now, what about, like, a coat or shoes or belt bought, like, secondhand, like, thrifted? I mean, I guess you still wouldn't want to do it, but, like... Sure. Did, but does that, do you These still consider that These are great rabbit hole questions to go down, <laughs> rabbit hole. Uh, if you would want to go, if you would make a declaration that says I'm an animal friendly person, I'm an activist, I'm, I'm a crusader, and you would like to go to a secondhand store and put on a fur coat and then walk out and go, yes, I'm still the crusader, I'm yeah, still the animal really activist, natural. you would look in the mirror and go, wait a minute, is this legit? Like, am I? Because you're still supporting it, you're still saying that fur is okay, and so on, and so on, and so on. But these are great questions, and the answer lies in the individual, right? I mean, it really does. Going back here really quick, um, after 20 years, remember the when. So this has been going for 20 years. I mentioned 25 years for me, for veganism. We've certified, now this is very interesting, right? And we're going to the source of the information. Again, librarian. In a library, we have a great question. Let's go right to the source and get the answer. We've certified 1,078 companies with over 10,000 certified vegan products. That a lot or a little? 20 years. Remember that they have to certify it. Now, for all my friends here, search our vegan, uh, certified vegan product database here. We're adding more each day. Here's how you can get certified. Let's just click on it and see what the deal is. There's an application. Distributed and recognized globally, that's awesome. Think about if you're traveling. Think about if you don't know the language, you don't know the currency. I can't ask you, do you have a vegan blah, 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 but I see the logo and I go, duh, duh, duh. you know, like then we can, then we're on the same page at least. How do we get down here? What do we, what do we need from us? No animal products, no animal testing, no animal GMOs, and you must, to your question, Nicole, you must provide verification Supplier verification, okay? And this is pretty uh, extensive here, and it looks like there was just a, um, an online application that you would do, and you have to sign in with your Gmail. And all that but you can also go back here, let's just look at some of the products, and they're flashing them through here. Does anybody recognize any of these products? Yeah. Traders, mm -hmm. Skin Pop. Now look, one would think, wait a minute. That's weird. So let's talk about it. So we see Hellman's, right? What's Hellman's known for? Mayonnaise. Mayonnaise. But they have a certified vegan alternative that's available, and it's cheaper than Veginase, and it's cheaper than some of the other ones. It's primarily oil. There's no eggs involved. Now here's the rub. Let me ask you, the which came first, the chicken or the egg? Would you support 
a primarily egg-driven company to get the alternative? Would you go to Burger King to get the alternative? These are the questions that we have to ask ourselves. Are you on Instagram but hate Facebook? Message for you, same company, right? <laughs> do you, you love Whole Foods but you hate Amazon? It's the same company, dude. What are you, what you talking about? You don't know how I'm arguing. You're making my face go like this. So these are the things that we deal with every day. Do you go to a secondhand store and wear a leather belt if you're vegan? Is that cool? Like, what do you do with dress shoes? Dress shoes are the worst. All this stuff. The belts, it has to be quarter. I mean, like, it's never ending. But this is the commitment. And so that's where we're getting into all the minutia. But these are great questions. You can get vegan leather. This is vegan. Vegan leather. 100 vegan, you can never tell the difference. Leather. I got a belt on that looks like leather. It's vegan. It's a vegan belt, so. Correct. I always get stuff that's vegan. Does it have some give to it? It just I mean, is enough, just as but, good as yeah. anything that I used to have. So this is a great location to go. I recommend it, vegnews.com. And again, from a librarian standpoint, is this an academic journal? No. But I trust this news organization, this outlet, to provide me with up-to-date information about products, about different, uh, when, <laughs> about different people, right? Different things, because we're always finding out new people and somebody's gone vegan or whatever. And to be honest, just for the sake of conversation between friends, if Haley Bieber, somebody, Kendall Jenner, somebody is like, oh, I've gone vegan. And like three seconds later, they're like, I'm not vegan anymore. At least that is letting everyone know, like here's vegan again, here's animal. We're animal friendly, whatever. If they're doing it for a fad, I don't care. If they're doing it to sell products, I don't care. Because it's still saving the life of an animal in that respect, okay? Uh, so here, different things here. Costa Rica is now serving vegan this. Study, 60% of the food emissions. Oh, we were just talking about this. 60%, that sounds like more than half to my math. Here's vegan pop star. This is kind of what I was referring to a moment ago. Um, Billie Eilish did a really cool thing where um, she wore this dress at the Met Gala last night and it was under the um, kind of a protest. Let me just click on that. Anybody know Billie Eilish in here? Uh, to ditch fur, wore a stunning gown, marking a historical change for Oscar de la Renta um, to never wear fur ever again. So she basically threw the gauntlet down. It was like, I'll wear this dress if you save how many animals? Thousands? Millions? I don't know. That's awesome, in my opinion. And these are the kinds of things that we should know about. And if we were at a veg club, we would be talking about it. Here's Ben & Jerry's, another great example. How many, who eats Ben & Jerry's? I don't, I can't. Yes. It's, way, it's way too rich, it's way too rich. However, they're primarily known for what? Ice cream, ice cream comes from what? Milk, milk comes from what? A cow. So it's primarily a cow, you know, destroying industry, but they have all these vegan brands. So once again, Joe's never raising his hand. Once again, it is kind of like, what do you do? You know, it makes me wonder. Good. <laughs> I mean, you turn vegan doesn't mean you stop loving food. Like, I see that and I'm like, oh my god, I remember ice cream, you know, I sure. love ice cream. And Briars has one, and I tried it, and it's not the same. It's not bad, but it's not the same. Um, but I wonder, you know, their, alter their motives, you know? How Absolutely. Benny and I think, yeah, Benny Jerry's. But you have to get into it. I mean, I'll, if I smell pizza or like cookies or something, and again, you brought up a good point where you say turn vegan. I would, I would encourage everyone to use the word evolve. Mm -hmm. I think that a vegan is, has been vegan. At least I'm speaking now from my point of view. I feel like and felt like I always was. It was just a matter of getting more information. And what do you do when you're seven or eight years old? I'm not eating this, go buy me vegan stuff. Like, no, you eat that or you don't, you know? And so when I came uh, to be 17, 18, I was getting more information, I was going to punk rock shows and rock and roll shows and I was getting leaflets and stuff and I was seeing, you know, what we're all talking about. This was before, before the internet. <laughs> and uh, that information was what I needed and then that gave me sort of the allowance to go, oh, okay, this is the lifestyle, this is what I want to be, and this is what I want to choose, and this is who I am. What do I need to do? And nowadays it's easy because it just says vegan. You're like, done, good, ready to go. But to your point, yeah. do I support Ben and Jerry's? Do I support any of these places? But at the same time, aren't 
Aren't you satisfied that it's been years of saying you should have a alternative and now there's an alternative and you're going, well, we just want the whole place to shift. So KFC is a great example too, where they have like beyond meat nuggets or whatever. Well, soon KFC is going to have to get rid of all their chicken. Soon Burger King is going to have to get rid of all their meat. It's just going to happen. It's, just, it's happening now. And by the way, I want to point out something. If you notice on any of the Burger King, let me show you. This is very interesting, and I don't know if everyone catches on to this. So if you do Burger King, and I, have you all seen the commercials for Burger King Impossible Whopper or heard it or anything? So when you look at it, they never say vegan, and they never say vegetarian. Why? I think you know why. What is this? Okay. Why would I? Why would I tick off 99% of my market base? Nobody wants to hear that. I'm a meat eater. I'm a burger eater. I don't want any vegetarian or vegan. I don't want those plant plant eaters or rabbits. I don't want them. Okay. So if you look at the marketing, it never ever says it. It always says. Um, either impossible, meat-free option, okay? And look what it says. Features a flame-grilled, insert the word vegan, not, not available, patty made from plants. So that's their slogan, it's made from plants. So think about that too. They don't want everyone else. And that this is, I guarantee you, when you look at the numbers, those numbers are starting to go more and more, and people are getting them. Has anyone eaten any one of them before at like Burger King or anything? Have you? Are they good? They're pretty good. Yeah, not too bad. It's you think you think it's more ex surprisingly good? They surprisingly replicate what I remember a Whopper tasting. Right. Like, I had that in, that memory. Is I mean, I've been a vegetarian since high school as well, and um, but you have that like a. Flashbulb type memory in your head of what that flavor is, and they do a convincing job of it. How about you in the back? You had it. It was it was good. You could try it again. Uh, yeah, I had it. It's just like you said. It's really similar to what you think the waffle tastes like. What about the price? What about the price of an Impossible Burger versus a Whopper? Do you think the Impossible Burger is going to cost more? About when you go to, has anyone ever been to a Starbucks before? Ever heard of a Starbucks? <laughs> has, uh, have you ever gotten a, a regular milk topper for free? Have you ever tried to do a soy milk add-on for 50 or 75 cents? Anybody know what the deal is on that? So you can see kind of the vegetarians and the vegans are kind of under the heel, right, of the, the, the rest of the market economy. And it doesn't make any sense, and it's not um, fun or... or uh, worth any of this time. I never pay, by the way, at a Starbucks. I'm always just like, give me the thing, I don't, uh, I'm, not, uh -uh, I'm not paying you. Because there's cow milk sitting right there. And then you start getting into all these different lawsuits too, where folks say, don't say milk. It's a plant-based beverage. Because who gets mad? The milk people. And why do the milk people get mad? Because you're taking our money. So again, yes, question. Did, well did, you, did you? Did you rinse it off? Especially right. Especially when I'm making my drinks up for a good five, ten seconds, you know. I'm not I'm not worried about the time, because to be quite honest, I don't take the job serious. <laughs> real talk, real talk. You know, um, but I'm gonna take my time to clean the cup from whatever milk I use because I also take into consideration my sister's vegan, or she's vegetarian, I'm sorry. Um, I'm trying to get into this um, lifestyle. And I'm just like, whoa. Just, I want to you know, make sure the cup is actually clean for somebody who wanted you know, an oat milk latte. Absolutely. And you, you bring up great points. And thank you for being candid and contributing to the conversation. And also, too, like the word vegan should maybe have an erosion to it. Just like the word librarian. You know? It's kind of like the plant-based 
I think is good enough. Like I'm, I'm animal free, should be good enough. And I, I, rather than a librarian, I'm an information professional. I think it opens the door to a lot more than kind of a, you're, you know, if you're, like you were saying, she's vegan and I'm vegetarian, I'm sorry. That doesn't really need to happen going forward. It's just kind of like we do what we do. We make these decisions each day and uh, think about it in the coffee terms. Think about it pizza, right? Think about cutting the thing. If I'm cutting a bunch of pizzas with cheese and then I go to cut a cheeseless pizza, well, that cheese is getting all over it. Think about the Burger King. What about the patties on the thing? And uh, The Burger King one said that you do have an option to put it on a different grill or something and then think of this. Um, excuse me, uh, can I have the thing? I and then you're in the drive-thru and there's 60 people there. No, I'm the other grill, I'm the vegan. It's like, dude, this guy, they're gonna take my picture and put it up on the wall and they're like, he's never coming back. And I've done that continually for 25 plus years. Yeah, it's Starbucks, you have some hard, and the Possible, um, I don't know where it lives, but. You have a breakfast patty? Yeah. yeah. From the Possible. And we don't, we have two ovens, we just put it in. Put it right in. And like, you also have your thinking, like with the spatula thing, they don't, it doesn't spatula. Why would they? Here's the next customer. Here's the next customer. Uh, the washing and the do. I'll be right there. Twenty people in line. I did to do. I gotta serve the one. Be it's just it's like only that. Right? That's it. That's all it is. So you really have to think about that, and you have to think about why would I go there and I want to make my own coffee, or go there and get the coffee and then go home and build it or something. Do you have a question? No, I was going to mention that I went to the uh, sugar factory with my daughter and my husband. It's her birthday, and I knew I couldn't have anything. But you know, you can find stuff. Like I had a salad. I had a salad there. And the waitress was really informative because I said, what about the french fries? And she goes, no, because we do not have a dedicated fryer. We fry our chicken in there. And I thought, oh, they didn't even tell me that. I didn't even think about it. Now, the vegan shoes and stuff, I'm not even there yet. You know, it's, it's steps. Because I had to take out all this research to figure out how to make all these different foods so you don't get sick of it. And mayonnaise you can make yourself. That's on my to-do list to make it myself. Um, but so that's something to think about. And, and it came up because my daughter was watching Paris Hilton. I know it only don't watch them. And she was doing McDonald's French fries. And she goes, Mom, French fries. And McDonald's French fries always had a chemical taste to me. Always. And everybody's like, Oh, they're the best French fries. I'm like, Not for me, guys. And she says, Mom, you know they're not vegan. I said, Get out of here. Paris Hilton said that. I don't believe it. So I googled it, and it's true. That's correct. It's true, they put beef in it and dairy. Beef talent, that's yeah, correct. So, like, oh my gosh. so in around 2001 or 2002, I lived in Chicago and I, I used to go, yeah, eat McDonald's french fries. Who's never eaten a McDonald's french fry in their entire life? Right. I can't, I don't know if anyone. They served how many billion people on the planet? People, astronauts have eaten it, right? In space, they have uh, locations. And so all of a sudden, something came out where there was this huge lawsuit and you could join if you wanted to, and that it was exposed that they were using beef tallow or beef in the either the, the like the coating or in the oil or something like that, and it was just like a total, you know. And dairy, there's dairy in it. I don't know. I, I... Also, they do something weird to the potatoes to like make them so they don't get like natural discolorations or something. That's why they last for a really long time. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so and that's, that's why they just have your money. And that's why it's like, do I really need a thing of fries right now? And then at the same time, you really go, do I really distrust? Was I really so shocked that I distrusted, you know, Murder King and, and uh, you know, <laughs> all these places? I mean, like, you know, there, there are stigmas to it. At the same time, what I really trust are the companies that I've researched and I stick with and I go, you know what, I'm really into it. And you brought up a good thing. Shoes and steps. It is a step. And that's why I was saying to you too, you don't have to just say, I'm vegan today. And it's just like ease into whatever decisions all these folks are going to be making because you have the rest of your life. And at the same time, you can see through all, I mean, I just popped up Google and you could just see um, this one, the next fast food chicken sandwich may be vegan. So Impossible Foods is now doing nuggets. Um, fried chicken wars, right? So it's all going into this, this is another thing. But there's more and more things coming out. There's vegan sushi. There, that's a whole new thing now. And you just, you just kind of have to start wrapping your mind around like, it, it's going to, and it has been, and I'm living proof and I've seen it, it's going to, vegan is just kind of go away and it's just gonna be the new normal. It's just gonna be plant-based. Now I will say, going back to the labels, I've noticed 
that you can find something that says it has plant-based, but it's not vegan. So beware of just going plant-based, good to go. I mean, it could be plant-based turkey neck. You know, like I, it, it says it on there, it says made from plant-based, and it's like in these, like, if you're asking for specifics, like these pot pies, like Stouffer's or these company, you know, it's a pot pie, and it's maybe it's the coating that's plant-based or something, but it's not. It has meat or dairy or something in it, so just beware. So anyway, any questions, thoughts, concerns? This has been a great, a great discussion, great audience. I have a question for the two back here. So, so what has gotten you all thinking about going vegetarian or vegan? Like, what are the, the things that you've noticed in your life that are moving you that direction? Um, I, my aunt is vegetarian. She's been vegetarian my entire life. She's also like someone who's super close to me. So I've always looked up to her. Um, and she would bring up uh, a lot of what we were talking about, like conspiracy, like stuff like that. And she'd be like, did you know about this? Did you know about this? And I'd be like, well, no, I didn't, but now I do. <laughs> so then um, about like sophomore year of high school, I stopped eating meat, vegetarian. Um, and then recently, like in the past year, I became lactose intolerant. So I kind of just stopped because it made me sick. But then I also like researched and felt like super bad about ever having anything to do with the dairy industry. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm just, like you said, still like evolving. I still have some stuff that I want to get out of my life. But I'm definitely, I'm not eating dairy or meat. I have for like a couple of years now. Excellent, congratulations. And on that note, just remember, and this is everyone in the room, there's nobody behind you pressuring you to do anything. So everyone take their time with everything and learn, that's what today's session was, and hopefully we got something out of it. But there's nobody who's like, I think it's society, and I think we have this fear of like, oh, I'm vegan, it's like, I see you eating that. Everyone just wants to rip you down. And they go, oh, you're vegan? Oh. Okay, all right, I'm sure that's, you know, and then it immediately becomes that, but it doesn't come that way with anyone else. It doesn't come that way with anything else. You're eating a burger or something like that? Oh, you're eating a burger? Well, where's your protein from? Like, that conversation doesn't have, it never happens. It's always this, and there's always been that negative stigma. Maybe it's just the United States thing. There's a negative stigma. You're a vegetarian or a vegan, you're a weakling, and you're just a wimp, and, and, but, we can look at all the bodybuilders and all the world athletes and you know many of them are plant-based and it's that those like i said those tables are a turning and the tides mm -hmm. are a changing and so i think we're starting to get some strength back but i'm sure you've all i see a lot of nodding heads it is that kind of like oh <laughs> you're a vegetarian oh hmm how can i like completely eviscerate you with the next like 20 questions and that happens all the time you bring someone to a party and it's like oh you came to the barbecue great this is jason he's vegan oh well i think we have some ice cubes in the freezer <laughs> you know you want them it's just like there's never you know it's always a it's always a struggle yeah, yeah what were you gonna say it's all marketing yep it's all marketing and yeah that's all of this which you, you i think Seaspiracy brings out is just marketing. Right. Marketing of a different industry, the milk industry, the fat farm, the meat industry. You can look at some of the commercials and see sometimes, and they are immediately like going after vegans or, or vegetarian, like the you know compassionate mentality, mm -hmm. overtly, and it almost becomes like political. It's like, why is that in the commercial to sell your product? But it's never the other way around. I mean, you never see like broccoli, cauliflower. It never happens that way, and there's never any like commercial for like uh, Impossible Burger where they're like, "You eating the burger? You're fat. You're gonna die." It's like that's aggressive, but it's flipped. <laughs> You're eating a veggie burger. Some big monster truck comes in and squishes the burger, and it's like. You can't, you know what I mean? And there's no, nobody's like looking at any of that. It's all just like you say, it's marketing to sell a product. And I know that certain uh, products, there was one of the Super Bowl, it was the oat milk guy, and he's just like sitting there and he's the CEO or whatever, and he sang kind of like a weird, quirky sort of song. That's like a typical like vegan vegetarian product commercial where he's like, oh milk, oh milk. 
And then you look at these other things and they're like burgers and like lightning bolts ejected into their skulls and it's like Burr. But that's our society. It'd be very interesting to have this conversation in any other country and see if it's the same standards there. Because notably in the UK, the activism and the vegan vegetarianism awareness is way increased. It's way more intense. Israel is unbelievable. Israel fantastic. The veganism in Israel is probably the top vegan country in the world. But if you go there, I mean, you recognize it. people have been oppressed. You know, Jewish people have been oppressed for thousands of years. They recognize oppression when they see it. So it doesn't take too long for them to recognize, oh my god, like the cruelty, the horror that's happening to animals, the, the exploitation, you know, all visited upon our people for thousands of years. So they're turning vegan so rapidly. Yeah. And you know, you think about different countries too. You think about, say, in India, uh, where the cow is sacred, you know, how's the Burger King sales doing there? You know, how's McDonald's? Do they have to, you know, change their menu to serve the clientele? I mean, these things go all around the world, and it would be interesting. So, uh, but anyway, uh, I'd love to get if you folks were interested, and we try to get vegan uh, a club going and get some information from you, everyone else. Thank you very much for, for watching and listening, and uh, we'll try to do it again soon. So, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I can post. You have that. Um, the.